Good morning, everybody, and welcome in this new episode of Language Exchange Podcast. As always, I've got a special guest for you today in this quarantine situation. In Italy, it's been already almost 30 days, 32 days. I don't remember anymore. I haven't seen the sun in a while. But, <laughs> and I'm glad to welcome a new guest from where who is uh, la okay let her uh, introduce yourself so mysterious guest introduce yourself hello everyone um, i'm so glad that uh, i'm here in this podcast so my name is jana i came from ukraine and now i live in poland i live here since 2017 and i'm a hotelier uh, so actually that's that's the most interesting information about me so that i moved uh, to other country when i was 17 and that hospitality is my love and i love to talk about hospitality i love to talk with, with people that's why probably i'm here in this podcast <laughs> so thank you very much nice to meet you Oh, thank you so much. All right, I will jump directly on your on that part of your life that's about hospitality. As we know, the coronavirus has been hitting all around on the world and all the kind of services uh, have been locked in, except luckily for the online jobs that are still up. And how did it affect your field? And how do you feel about it? Are you working or something new? Are you working on trying to work to learn to teach? What are you doing at the moment? So that's not a secret that coronavirus affected the whole uh, tourism industry, I'd say, and a lot of companies are closed, uh, especially hotels, uh, especially event uh, companies and uh, gastronomy as well. I mean, the banqueting, uh, catering and all this stuff. So that's affected so much, I guess, uh, around the world and in Poland, that's affected so much as well. We still have some hotels opened, but they uh, cut uh, their list of workers, let's say. And uh, the situation is uh, is awful, actually, I'd say, but I hope everything will be OK in a couple of months, probably in, in, year, in, uh, in half of year. Probably in the year, I don't know, but I know uh, I know that people will travel again. That's for sure. Uh, even if we can, uh, let's say, uh, let's say uh, to, to say no for some business events, uh, to say no for some conferences. I mean, business conferences. But people will always want to travel, to relax, to chill, to go out from their environment, to get known a new culture, try new food. So I think that leisure uh, hospitality will live forever, that's for sure. And uh, business hospitality as well, probably after the coronavirus, that would be not so perfect as that was before. Uh, so yeah, and uh, right now, a uh, hotel where I worked is closed. I, I don't like actually this, uh, this definition, let's say, uh, to be closed because uh, that's frozen for the time till September and I hope uh, we'll warm up the atmosphere and uh, hospitality business will work so hot in a couple of months. Uh, so right now uh, I don't have uh, a contract with my company as well. I uh, hope uh, on September I'll go back to this company because I love the atmosphere, the property, um, everything there. The team was super great. <clears throat> And the uh, idea of the hotel, idea of the business, what we made there, uh, is amazing. Really, the location, the guests, uh, everything. Uh, so right now, I work on two other projects. Uh, one connected to the hospitality, and the second is connected to the marketing. Uh, so the first project uh, uh, is called Hotel Mania, and uh, we are creating a kind of of educational platform for uh, hoteliers, for young students, uh, for juniors of this industry, uh, for people from different schools of hospitality. And we want them to show the life of hotelier, to show them the industry, to show what they will do there, uh, which opportunities do they have there, uh, which possibilities, where can they work, how to write your first CV, how to be a great hotelier, what you should have in, in inside of you, like your personality. 
uh, to work in this industry and to work well in this industry. Uh, first of all, you should love people <laughs> and uh, that's really hard to work with people and for people sometimes, but if you are open-minded, why not? So this project uh, is an um, educational project and we are preparing kind of uh, webinars, different uh, marathons uh, for hoteliers and writing posts about that and showing them live, telling funny stories from our experience. So that, that's really great. I love this project because when I was young, <laughs> younger, three, younger than right now, <laughs> three years ago, when I just uh, entered the university, I didn't know what will I do in the future in this uh, industry uh, actually i i had not, nothing in my mind i felt like okay hospitality okay tourism industry that means that i'll travel no <laughs> definitely no uh, you you will uh, you won't travel in this industry if you are a hotelier but the whole world uh, comes to you so um that's that's great because every day you meet new people and that's super cool really uh, so if I had such project uh, as we are creating right now, Hotel Mania, and people will tell me what will I do, and that uh, we are telling uh, about, we are talking about hospitality from the uh, staff side, from the staff room, let's say, not from the guest point of view. Uh, so I will be so grateful for that because uh, if when when I see my uh, classmates at university. Uh, and uh, I see that they do not like this industry and they entered this university because they uh, needed to enter something after the graduation from school. So yeah, that's uh, that's awful when a person did not like the work and did not like the, uh, the industry where do uh, they study. And uh, I want to reduce that because actually such cases, I mean, when a person enters the hospitality business and do not like the hospitality business, that affects so much on guests and on your services, on your um, reviews, opinions, and actually work with people. So uh, I would like to reduce, uh, reduce the numbers of such cases. Uh, so yeah, what the question was, because I started... <laughs> <laughs> it's completely fine, okay, no, it's, you answer the question properly, but I have a couple of questions for you, specifically in the field of hospitality, I was uh, wondering about, um, for as normal people, I'm joking, it sounds like over obscure world we cannot access, so, so it sounds so far away, you, so, you see so many people working in hospitality in hotels, but you don't really know what their path so the first question is going to be uh, what do you need what are the requirements um, to work well in hospitality for hotels the second question is going to be will this platform you're you're organizing you're working on uh, will be international so will it be open to everybody or is it meant to a specific kind of audience Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so uh, the first question: uh, What should you have to work in hospitality? First of all, you should you should love people. Uh, all right. For sure. Uh, yeah, and you you should understand that you will work with people and for people, and that's not easy because every day you're uh, you you can meet uh, one hundred of different characters, one hundred uh, different smiles, uh, arguments, and they're super different. Uh, you know. When I am on the reception, when I work and I meet a lot of people, in one day I feel myself like a salad, actually, because different ingredients are coming to me. And sometimes that's, you know, the onion, sometimes it's a sweet carrot. And it's, I'd say, like, the hospitality sometimes that's a salad because of different people and different ingredients in our industry. Uh, the second, uh, you, you need not uh, to have any, uh, you know, strict, uh, strict requirement, for example, to know mathematics or to know, I don't know, IT technologies, uh, you you will you will study that during your work. Actually, uh, the main uh, question is to be a good person and to realize that you are responsible for your guests, for your work, for your team, and you need not to leave uh, your work to other chefs, to other people. Uh, you should be super responsible, actually. 
because you should follow everything what's going on in the system and what's going on on the lobby, for example, and with the person who is just in front of you. And uh, very important is not to stress, uh, because when you see that the person stress in front of you or argue with you and you start to stress, uh, you will do uh, the bad scenes inside of the system and that will affect uh, the whole your work then, whole shift. Uh, and the second, the second question about this Hotel Mania project. Uh, so right now uh, we write this uh, post and uh, webinars only for Polish audience, for Polish students. Uh, but we have plan to go to the international area, to international market, and to do it in English. Yeah, but you know the, we wanted this project to be known uh, as a Polish project that we came from Polish uh, market. That's why we are doing that in Polish for, uh, in Polish language right now. But in the future, for sure, we'll do that on the inter, uh, on the in English, and we'll go for international market. Yeah. So, people, if you're interested about this kind of fields, you will shortly have your Duolingo on your side. Start learning Polish and <laughs> start learning yeah, from exactly. this from this kind. Of, I really admire that because it's, it's so important that young people start working on this kind of of project and on they might invest in education i truly think it's a truly important uh, part of um actually contributing uh to the society mostly in this part or of the year which we are living in such kind of of situation and your positivity will surely inspire people listening that will surely invest in on this field and is there any choice you would regret in your life about this path? And the second question is, why did you decide to move from Ukraine? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll start uh, probably from the second question because that's super easy to answer. Uh, my parents, all uh, like during my whole life, they wanted me to move to other country and they wanted me to study uh, in other country. And uh, I had the, uh, some choices as well, uh, but um, just in the last minute I chose Poland because it was near to my country. The language is not so hard for us because I'm from Slavic group of uh, languages. Uh, so that took time to study Polish language, but that's not so hard as it could be, for example, to study Chinese or something like that, you know, even English. Uh, so and the uh, quality of life is higher here. Uh, people are more, I'd say, I'd say like from Europe, from Europe, we, they have inside of them this culture uh, to be in Europe, to live in Europe. In Ukraine, we still don't have that, unfortunately. Uh, infrastructure, people, business, uh, governments. Like uh, I, when I when I moved here, I didn't realize that here uh, all these aspects are better than in Ukraine. But uh, during uh, the whole my life here, I realized that that was great choice to go just directly after the graduation from the school to go directly here to the other country, foreign country. And the, yeah, because of the distance, you know, you know, after when you live with parents uh, during your 17 years and parents live with you and they take care of you. And that would be hard for me to move uh, somewhere further. Uh, like USA or Canada and not to see them for some years and uh, that would be awful yeah for sure but when I moved here to Europe uh, that was easy to go home in any time uh, when I wanted do you want to go tomorrow home yeah okay here's your tickets let's go uh, so for um, for my mind that was easier to move here closer closer to Ukraine and uh, what was the first question sorry <laughs> The first question was about, oh, I forgot. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> I was into the topic. You know, well, actually, I have right away another question that is going to be a really, truly inspiring um, for, for people that are deciding uh, or that were deciding to move abroad for uh, for this year, for university or for any kind of work project what are your suggestions about it because that's a very tough topic to talk about nobody really gives you because there isn't any objective su suggestion you could give to people when they want to travel abroad 
not just to travel or just to leave abroad for studying, uh, what do you suggest? Is it right to leave your country for, for a better future? Or how would you do that? Because in my opinion, that what I was planning to do was basically to take some tickets all around the world to take the chance to visit before actually deciding where to go and where to work. So what is the right place for you and how? what, what are your suggestions for people that are actually planning to move abroad but they don't know where and they are afraid of living alone? Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, uh, it, it's not the band of uh, the country, actually, of the university as well. If uh, you decided to go somewhere further to other country, go. <laughs> Just go and don't ask any more questions because even if uh, this country would be worse than yours, the life there will change your life for sure. The everyday basis will change you because I compare myself to my classmates from school who uh, who live right now in Ukraine, still near to parents. And when I talk to them, I see the difference because I'm more responsible for my life than them. And that made me, um, I'd say, older than them inside of my mind. Uh, because I know that if I need a help here in the country, uh, I should think about it myself. My parents won't help me, they do not know language, they do not have here friends. So I should do it myself and to think about my life, to take responsible of my life and of all my duties. I cannot forget to, to go to the university or to work because I'll, uh, I'll just lose it. So no way. And for people who stay near to their parents, that's easier and they do not feel such kind of responsibility of their life. So, uh, first of all, if you want to move somewhere, if you want and you just have this idea inside of your mind, go. Even if one year would be awful there, the second would be better, the third would be great, I'd say. Because for each person it's hard on the start to live in a new country. Because of language, uh, because of people, because of nationality, because you even even like Ukraine and Poland are pretty similar but totally different and uh, that's normal you should just think that that's normal and if you are in this country take responsible of that to know their local language uh, people appreciate that so if you want to move somewhere study language first of all uh, to feel yourself um, easier to feel yourself better and more confident uh, to live in here, uh, to live in here. Because when I moved here, I didn't know any word in Polish language. Uh, I study a study in English language as well. So that was hard for me to communicate with some people. Because, for example, seniors here in Poland they do not know uh, English, so only Polish, and that's hard. And uh, uh, Think about your university or work if you want to move uh, to move for study. Uh, that would be easier because you're going to university and there you have an environment of students, different cultures, different people, and that's very easy to find friends there. The first, uh, I'd say, three months would be the hardest in your life because you don't know uh, anyone uh, and uh, you're in a new country, new environment. That's hard. But you will cope with that for sure. Uh, I suggest as well, if you have an opportunity to find someone who will live, for example, in your dormitory or uh, nearby or who is your classmate at university, if you have a chance to find such person in social, uh, social networks, do that and communicate. That would be easier from the start, even, even when you're in your country. And uh, I know a lot of people who uh, moved to other countries and uh, after the first year they came back to their countries and uh, they were afraid to, to go somewhere once again. And that's the biggest mistake which you can make in your life um, to give up in, su in such question. Yeah, because if the life in other country, in foreign country, will change you totally. 
seriously, and that's great experience. That's amazing. Uh, be easy going. Do not mind about any any questions, any opinions from the side of your uh, family, friends, uh, who stay in your country still. Just go because you should uh, fight for your life, for your better life, for your education, for your future work. You should fight. And if you won't do that, anyone won't do it for you. So fight for your future. And that's it. And do not think, oh my gosh, probably that would be very hard for me. Oh my gosh, probably that would be super hard for me. No, don't think about that. Just go face your problems and challenges and go and cope with that. That will help you in your work life, in your social life. And that's it. Just do not be afraid because we have all life to afraid about something. That's not time to afraid. That's not the biggest problem that could happen in, just in front of you. Just go and do that. Life changing. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. That's truly a life changing experience uh, you are sharing here. Uh, loads of people are really afraid of their uh, future, probably because they're just afraid to think about themselves somewhere else. Uh, and, and just for that, I have the last three questions for you that's connected to your previous speech. Uh, truly motivational, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. They will surely inspire people to move abroad. So um, I, I truly think that having a point of view for somebody that has done it more than actually it could be a teacher or it could be someone else that is leaving in their own country it could be life-changing uh fr from the bottom indeed like because it's a uh if you receive a, a, a an experience like that from uh the same age same mates uh it, it's it's completely different uh but i have three questions for you before we end it over um, and I'd like to thank you now for what you're sharing with us. It was truly uh, life-changing. Oh, the first question <laughs> is your, your funniest experience you had uh, living in a country when you don't know any language. So uh, your first impact and your, your funniest thing happened to you when you moved in Poland. And the second and the third question are related to the funniest thing happened in hospitality and the worst thing that happened in hospitality in the field. Okay. Um, so about uh, language misunderstanding. Um, actually, that's happened to me still <laughs> because uh, you know uh, Ukra Ukrainian and Polish language are similar, and sometimes when I see when I think that. Uh, this word would be the same in Polish language as in uh, uh, in uh, Ukra Ukrainian language. That's totally not that. <laughs> and you know when people just look at me and like Yana, what do you, what do you mean? I'm like you know about this, about this, about the, I don't know uh, the name of the fish. Do you know this fish? Do you know this fish? And they're like, uh, no, we do not have such word in our uh, language. I I was like ah. Okay, never mind. Okay, <laughs> forget about that. You know, when I when I want to uh, make a joke sometimes, and I don't know which words to use in Polish language, and uh, you know, I'm telling that, and people do not understand. But I'm laughing so much, and I'm laughing more that that was awful joke, and they didn't didn't understand. So that's probably the the funniest stuff. Uh, like I'd say that not super fun, but that that was the point. This, that situation was a point uh, for me uh, to start uh, learn Polish language more. Uh, when I went to the bank and uh, me and my friend from Ukraine, we were talking in uh, Russian language and just, you know, laughing, describing something, everything was okay. And I came to the girl uh, in the bank, uh, to, to, the, to the worker of the bank and I asked her, uh, like, in English, I asked her, like, oh, hello, I would like to make a bank account. I wanted to uh, make a card, back, a bank card in your bank. And uh, she looked at me and she was a little bit angry. Uh, and she told, like, uh, I'm so sorry, I don't speak English. And, you know, with perfect uh, British accent, she told me that. 
<laughs> and I was like, okay, uh, first of all, the worker of the bank did not uh, know English, French. And I know that she was angry on me because I, uh, I was talking loud. I was talking not in Polish language. Uh, I'm in their country and I do not speak their language. So she was, you know, angry and probably I disturbed her work uh, when, when we were talking loud with my friend. So, and that was the, the I don't know, the worst situation uh, on the bank when I didn't know how to explain her in, in Polish language what I want. And Google translation, hello. And that was super hard. I told, uh, I thought that I made some mistakes in my street. I don't know. That that was like uh, super awful. I was angry on her as well because uh, she didn't tell anything during my conversation with my friend when we were talking loud. And uh, then she just thought like, okay, I don't speak English. So sorry, so sorry. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, you know, and that was like a point when I when I thought like Yana you should do that because that's not normal uh, if you will uh, speak English in this country for some uh, more years uh, you won't be able to find a work in hospitality and that happened because uh, to work on the reception on the hospitality business uh, in a local in a country you need to know a uh, local language for sure and on such level to communicate and to solve problem and to uh, make jokes on this language as well. That's very important in hospitality business. Uh, so the funny situation and the worst situation in hotel. Just let me think because I had I had a lot of experience during the uh, last one year and a half. Uh, probably, uh, probably the the funny the yeah the funniest experience. Yeah, yeah, I know what to tell. Uh, I had the reservation from the cancel flight and uh, some guests uh, came from the airport, uh, their flight was cancelled and they had reservation in our hotel and I was alone, uh, there was around 50 people and they were coming one by one, so all the time I had the queue in the reception and uh, uh, before before th this situation what happened, all the guests uh, talk to me in English or in Polish language so uh, mm -hmm. and I heard that some Russian voices somewhere in the queue and uh, they came to me they give their vouchers and I started to talk to them in English because I like I like to surprise people that I know Russian yeah <laughs> so I started to talk to them in English and their English was super poor and uh, I asked them for which, like, for which time do you need taxi tomorrow? And they like, uh, sorry, what? I, I asked like, taxi, taxi, showing the car, showing the clock, you know, taxi, time, time, taxi, you know, this, this for, for <laughs> like the jest and all this, taxi, taxi, for which taxi? And one guy, one guy told like, uh, um, like, wait, he raised her finger uh, in the air to the top. And he he told like nine quota, and I was like uh, nine fifteen in the morning a.m. And he was like, uh, okay, yeah, okay. And then I I repeat nine uh, fifteen in Russian language, and he, and he was like, oh my gosh, why you're scaring me? so much and I was like oh I'm so sorry I just wanted to check your English skills and his friend who was standing just near to me he was he told on the Russian language like oh, bitch I was like oh my gosh no I told, I, I told I'm so sorry I'm so sorry for this situation but that was super funny I'm sorry that was unprofessional and that guy who told bitch he felt like oh no 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 no, no, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, never mind. That won't be for you because uh, I told that because the situation was super fun and the, you know you made such kind of joke. I was like, oh, sorry, so so sorry, so sorry, and like that was funny experience. Uh, and that's my probably favorite story. Uh, when they went back uh, to their rooms, they came uh, came then to the reception, and uh, 
told me thank you very much that you know Russian language. I was like, okay, <laughs> no, my pleasure. <laughs> Swear, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah because my quota that was super, super harsh, and uh, like, you know, the queue, the queue is standing, and he was, he raised her finger up, and nine quota, and you know, the break <laughs> between the between the languages <laughs> that was super, super funny, and they bought some prosecco. Uh, I made my all the shift, you know, the rapport, Then, then, then they were sitting on the lobby. Then he, uh, he came. Uh, he came to me and told like you're super cool, you're super nice. I wish you good luck in your in your career. You're super, you, you're perfect hotelier. And I thought like, oh yeah, after after the beach, you should tell me that the whole <laughs> night <laughs> because that was super unprofessional. And uh, probably the worst uh, thing that happened to me uh, that was first days on reception. Yeah, because I didn't know the system. Uh, I was still working in a Polish language and we had around 140 departures. I was on the morning shift. My manager, uh, one one guy from the reception and me, and you know, the queue people from uh, from 7.30 till 9, that's the uh, hardest time for reception when all the business guests are going out and asking about invoices uh, to record their parking tickets. Uh, to tell them where the breakfast, where their offices allocated. So that was th- that's super hard, really. And uh, we are three, two computers, and I'm standing just uh, just on the uh, left side of one uh, of the guy on the reception. I don't know what to do. I'm super scared. A lot of people language, and that uh, and one guy uh, came to me and uh, gave me the parking ticket. And told like, please, please, record, record, I'm late on my meeting. And what I do, I took this ticket. I do not have access to the computer because two people already are on the reception. And I took this ticket, at stand, I was standing and only smiling to this guy. And he, he was super <laughs> angry, like, please record me this ticket, please record because I'm late, I'm late. And I'm standing like, you know, um, the, fir- the, fir- the, fir- the first day of the reception, actually, I don't know what should I do with your ticket because that's hard, really hard system, a system of the parking. To recall that, you need to mention the room number, guest name, to recall that properly, to take a payment, and you know that's, that's super hard. And I'm standing with this ticket, and he's like, okay, but what you're, why you're still keeping my ticket? I, I was like, I don't know. You know, it, this, this was super <laughs> awful, yeah, because I was scared of such amount of people. I didn't expect that. And he just take ticket, uh, took ticket back, uh, you know, with, with just a little bit of aggressive, <laughs> aggressive yeah. movements, let's say. And yeah, my manager uh, recalled the ticket for him and that was okay. So I hope he won't be late uh, to his meeting. <laughs> yeah, the, the first day on the reception, I'm 18 years old. Do not know anything about hospitality. Uh, standing on the reception, do not know system, and and people want me to do something what I do not know what to do, and I don't know why I took that ticket actually. But but when I see when I see uh, people the first day on the reception and they're uh, that's the first days on the reception at all in their life, not in this reception on the uh, like of our hotel. Uh, that's visible that the person is the first time and stress, stress, stress all the time, all the time during first months as yeah. So that's that's awful. But but actually that's cost of that because um, like when when people react on you like that, you understand that you are doing something bad <laughs> and you you need to change your uh, work and to be as more professional as possible so in such cases when you do not know what to do and uh, when you asking someone about the help about man- manager or chief or chief leader you understand and for me that the push to to improve myself and to do uh to study, to learn all the stuff, what I should to know on the reception, to make my work as more um, independent as it possible of all of people on the on the hotel. Let's say, yeah. For sure. All right. So we learned that in these kind of fields, like in the most working fields at the beginning part, we could never be prepared 
100%. And also, uh, the this kind of feels, it's it's a lot of adventure. It's a daily adventure. And the cool thing is that you have to deal with different stuff every day because you've got to deal with different people every day. And they're all different. So all different necessities, language barrier and anything. Um, so it's a sort of uh, adventure. They will um, educate you on problem solving. And, and it's just a matter of experience though and if you really want to do that uh, you, if you really feel that you, that's your feels you can help people and you love speaking to people um, it's really important to find your path during your way because if you if you do understand that's not for you you should just leave it for someone else that, that's what I think about that's one of the most important concepts uh, but if you do think that's your field, but you don't feel ready. Nobody is really ready 100%. And because it's just a matter of being good at impro improvising, you know? You're going to be nice at improvising and adapt to the situation, I would say. And Eroch, we are at the end of the episode of today. I really hope you really enjoyed our Yana here she has lots of stories to tell and a lot of experience keep in tune I will leave our project on on our description and for any question you would like to ask her write down on the comments she will more than happy to answer you back probably in the new episode we don't know let's hope this situation of the coronavirus will end up soon and she will go back to work uh, professional and ready as always thank you so much Yana for joining thank you very much that was super great that was my first experience to recording such kind of stuff thank you very much and I wish everyone to take care to be healthy to protect your families wash your hands and smile all the time while you're washing your hands that could be a nice suggestion <laughs> a bit crazy if you're Clean your hands, but remember, remind to subscribe to our other social networks on Facebook and Instagram. We daily post. And if you would like to join our WhatsApp group established in 2016 for a lang true language exchange, feel free to text me back on YouTube here in the comments. Thank you so much, Jan, again, and I wish you a beautiful weekend. Thank you.